All right, then modifiers are, they're all defined. So if you say there's some pattern is frequent, that means it occupies between 10 and 49% of the record. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. just make up uses for these things, they're, they're defined. So this is prevalence, so percent of the record that has a pattern. There's also duration, which is how long the, each instance of the pattern lasts. We'll, mm -hmm. I think we'll get to that. So, there it is, right so there. people get those confused. So this is when you see, so say you see rhythmic delta activity intermittently in a record. If you add it all up, the percent of the record, that, that's prevalence. Mm -hmm. uh, it's also another form of burden. People talk about seizure burden or burden of a pattern. That's really mm -hmm. the prevalence. Um, whereas duration is when a given instance, if it's, you know, if it usually lasts five seconds, that, that means it's very brief. Mm. Even if you have lots of them, they're still very brief. You could have a high burden of very brief episodes. Yeah, you can. Mm. Exactly. That's how Dr. Westover um, texts me saying how annoying I am. I'm frequently <laughs> annoying, occasionally <laughs> annoying, rarely annoying. <laughs> and are you annoying for a long time in a row or is it, are there... Just for a few seconds at Usually a time. Usually very brief, very brief <laughs> okay. annoyances. So abundant, very brief annoyances. <laughs> that's, that's, that's shockingly accurate. Oh, yeah. So this other little highlighting here just shows the change from the prior version. Uh, mm -hmm. This used to be five minutes. It changed to 10 minutes. And that was uh -huh. to, ma to match the internationally against epilepsy definition mm -hmm. of non-convulsive status. Ah, uh, mm -hmm. nice. Okay. So... Convulsive status is a five minute cutoff for all other statuses. It's really 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, moving on. So uh, this is the plus modifiers. This is an important one as it's been shown to have real clinical correlations and even has been uh, associated with outcomes. Mm -hmm. uh, but so this is something on top of the basic pattern that makes it seem even closer to a seizure. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can have superimposed fast activity, you can have superimposed rhythmicity, and you can have superimposed sharp waves or spikes. So it's plus F, plus R, and plus S. Mm -hmm. And you can have more than one of those pluses too, depending on the pattern. So this is uh, F. a good example of, right, each periodic discharge just has a little burst of fast activity with it, or at least many mm -hmm. of them do. You can see it here too. So LPDs this is plus LPDs F. plus F for the superimposed fast activity, which does uh, mean there's even, even higher association with seizures and even some long-term outcomes might be more likely when there's a plus. Hmm. So it does matter. LPDs we added F. in a modifier of the sharpness too, because these are pretty uh -huh. spiky and there's no E in spiky. It's a good thing you can edit this thing. <laughs> or not. <laughs> 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 this is uh this is lpd it's more only right, right lpds is it lpds plus r is that what this is oh well, very, very nice so it's hard yeah this, this is a good example there's actually there's rhythmic delta or is it spike and, and wave? there's also periodic discharges uh -huh. so is it spike and wave well the problem <laughs> is the spike here is kind of in a different place than this one Mm -hmm. sometimes it's in a trough sometimes it's near the top and then mm -hmm. over here you lose the i see okay it's mm -hmm. not six in a row that's a clear spike then wave then spike then wave like here there's mm -hmm. and here it's just a sharp wave so it's not quite regular enough to call it spike and wave i don't think it's close close but we call this but, learn of, or lpds plus r yeah so what do you do it's a clear rda and it's a clear periodic discharge they're both there Clearly. So we actually win. have a, a rule for that, right? The PDs mm -hmm. win. So when they're both president, you call it PDs plus R for the superimposed rhythmicity. Mm -hmm. So that's what this is. This is LPDs plus R. You mm -hmm. can say, well, it could also be lateralized rhythmic delta activity plus S. And that's true, but just a, mm -hmm. a rule that the periodic discharges win out if they're about equally prominent. Right. PDs win all the time. They're program directors. They <laughs> exactly. They rule. Okay, overrule. So this is lateralized program directors plus rhythmic. <laughs> <laughs> Deal, got it. Okay, uh, the next modifier is whether a pattern is evolving or not. And the other options are it's fluctuating or if it's neither of those, we call it static. Um, and evolution or, or fluctuation refers to frequency, location, or morphology. So any one of those is enough to qualify. Mm -hmm. But amplitude 
alone does not. So starting with evolving, which of course is a key feature of seizures. Um, so you have to have at least two unequivocal sequential changes in frequency, morphology, or location. And for frequency, it has to change by 0.5 each time. So you can go to two to 2.5 to three, and that would be enough. Or the, it can be slowing down. Mm. And morphology, you have to uh, change to a different morphology twice. Mm -hmm. And location, it has to spread into or out of at least two different standard 1020 electrode locations. Uh, interestingly, evolution has been used for you know many, many decades for defining seizures, and it was never really defined. <gasps> mm -hmm. It was one of those, it's, I know it when I see it things, mm -hmm. which is, you tell that to a beginner each year, you drive them crazy. Yeah! <laughs> um, and that's a couple explanatory notes. So if a pattern is evolving and lasts 10 seconds or longer, that's a seizure. Mm -hmm. by definition. Mm -hmm. If it's evolving, it's between half a second and 10 seconds mm -hmm. and gets faster than four hertz, that's called a bird. Brief, potentially ictal rhythmic discharge. Mm -hmm. We can talk about later. Mm -hmm. And if it's evolving, uh, but it never reaches more than four hertz, then mm -hmm. you just use evolving as a modifier. So you can have evolving RDA um, that's not a seizure or a bird as long as it, it's not common because it's got to evolve and be fairly slow and finish in less than 10 seconds. Mm. So it's hard to do. It's pretty rare, but you can have evolving RDA. Um, so this is showing a pattern evolving from five hertz down to three hertz and then going down to two hertz by the end. So that's evolution in frequency. This is the same thing just with sharp waves instead of a rhythmic pattern. Okay, so those would both count as evolving in frequency. Oh. Here's an example of evolution of morphology. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to name these things, but you see it gradually change from this smooth thing to this bumpy thing to this sharp thing. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just showing evolution in location. You see this mm -hmm. thing mm -hmm. gradually spreads more posteriorly right and more broadly. Mm -hmm. here's, a, here's another example where it spreads to the other side. So, so we, we wouldn't automatically call it a seizure just because it's spreading out. Is that right? Uh, well, if it does this and it lasts more than 10 seconds, you would. Okay. So even if it stays at the same frequency, spreads out and lasts more than 10 seconds, it's a seizure. Yes, that mm -hmm. based on evolution of location, yeah. yeah. I guess the one caveat is it can't just get bigger and therefore have a slightly bigger field. It has to right, actually right. move. To, right, yeah. Okay. And, but you need two, though, right? You need evolution in frequency and no, morphology. You only, you only need one of those. Only one. Oh, just yeah. one. Oh, I thought you need two. Any one of those three. Amplitude doesn't count, but you need one of the other three. Frequency, morphology, or spatial okay. or location. Right. One, okay. Yeah, so here's a good example of uh, evolution on the quantitative EED with that diagonal pattern you're referring to. Mm -hmm. um, so here it is on the CSA or spectrogram. You see this diagonal as it's uh, basically the power is dropping in frequency from, uh, I don't know what the scale is here, probably up to 20. So probably it's going from beta to alpha down to theta. Mm -hmm. And they also, this is a rhythmicity scale here. It shows the rhythmicity gradually slowing down. So that's basically evolution of frequency. That's what those diagonal patterns are. So mm -hmm. diagonals, and you can see it here also in the symmetry, showing it's all from the right side here. Red is right. So anyway, that's, uh, nice. that's evolution and frequency seen on quantitative EEG. Uh, and then for fluctuating, it, it can't qualify as evolving, but it's going back and forth, so at least three changes mm -hmm. in, in the same three things. They have, they each change has to be less than a minute apart. Mm -hmm. So I think examples are easier. So you see here, it goes from four hertz to two hertz, mm -hmm. then back to four hertz, then back to two hertz. Mm -hmm. So that kind of back and forth pattern. Okay, mm -hmm. another modifier is sharpness. Um, and there's actually, they're, they're based on the duration at the baseline. So that's actually kind of the only place you can reliably measure uh, how sharp something is. There is, 
it's very hard to measure how apiculate something is. We don't really have a good measure for that. Uh, maybe we should, but we don't. Um, so if this is, we did, again, same as the definition of a spike in a sharp wave anywhere else. So less mm -hmm. than 70 milliseconds is spiky and mm -hmm. 70 to 200 is sharp wave. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have two things. It can be the, the sharpest phase, like in this one, the spiky is the sharpest, mm -hmm. but this is the predominant phase or the biggest phase and that's actually sharp. So there are technically two different sharpnesses. <laughs> so you would sum them up, do 170 plus 16, it'll be blunt at the end if you count both? No, I don't do that. No. Then, I, then even bursts of polyspikes you'd call blunt. Mm, that's you true. don't want to do that. So no, you would say the sharpest component is spiky and the predominant component is sharp. Okay. Voltage. And then voltage. Uh, this is not background voltage. This is voltage of like periodic discharges. Yeah. So each discharge is measured from its yeah. from peak to trough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we talk about relative amplitude too, which is the amplitude of this discharge compared to the background amplitude, which yeah. is still peak to trough of the majority of it. We you ignore the outlying waves like these. So the majority of the background is this. A little b, which means background amplitude. So this is whether a pattern is spontaneous or stimulus induced or stimulus terminated. Ah, and mm -hmm. this orange color means it's new. And this so we, stimulus mm -hmm. terminated is a new term added in the 2021 version. Mm -hmm. um, so stimulus induced just means a pattern can be brought about by any alerting stimulus to a patient. It can be regular nursing care. It can be pain. It can be suction. Whatever. Um, now it's allowed to also occur at other times, as long as you know you can bring it out with an alerting stimulus, and that counts as stimulus induced. And it also includes patterns that are exacerbated. So it could already be there, but if it gets much more prominent or faster or uglier when you stimulate them, that still counts as this SI prefix. So it does, doesn't need to be invariably tied to a stimulus that you can see, but it just it does have to be kind of consistent enough or, or reproducible that right the, that that's can, the thing it has yeah. to be it has to be reproducible you can yeah. no, what, what in your mind what's the significance of you know why, why even call out this distinction of whether it's stimulus induced or or stimulus terminated or stimulus dependent yeah that's a great question it may it may not matter it's, it's overall the it's the pattern that matters more than the fact that it's stimulus induced so if every time you stimulate it causes a, a clear seizure that's of much more significance and probably has the same meaning as seizures that just happen at any point. Um, I use the example of, for example, of uh, photic induced seizures, right? If you, if you stimulate someone with photic and they have a generalized convulsion, that convulsion is exactly the same, just as dangerous and bad for the brain as any other convulsion. Just because it was stimulus induced doesn't make it any more benign. Some of the large studies, there was no statistically significant difference in the association with seizures and whether a pattern was stimulus induced or not. Um, but with some of the patterns, there was a little bit of a difference. The association with seizures was a little higher if it was not stimulus related, but most of them, there was no difference and none of them, none of them reached a statistical difference. Yeah. So I think a lot of people sort of have that idea that if they're stimulus induced, they're less serious. But like what you're saying is that's not not so clear that that's true. Fact, right, exactly. There's some evidence against that idea. Yeah. Yes. But and again, the, he can't, and, and lumping all the stimulus induced patterns to me makes no sense at all. Even though I was the first person to do that and gave it a name that was the Serpids yeah. name for stimulus induced rhythmic periodic erectal discharges. Because uh, we know like stimulus induced generalized rhythmic delta activity. Yeah. Well, it means nothing, right? It has, right. GERDA so it has no association with seizures. So, we shouldn't shouldn't say, oh, it's just serpents to any more than we should say it's just just serpents coming around. That's what my grandma said. <laughs> it's all, it always comes to the show. Yeah. Yeah. We all have grandmas giving advice about serpents. Yep. <laughs> no, but just uh, on that note, still, I think it's important because I've seen different um, uh, aggressiveness in treating seizures if they're um, induced by stimulus versus not. So, so we should probably treat them the same as in terms of medications and, and aggressiveness as well. Is that, is that true? Well, I think they have the same mm -hmm. effect on the brain. The only difference is that 
you could minimize the seizures by minimizing stimulation. Right. So that's one option is minimize stimulation. And in, in some of the more extreme cases, we do what we call serpid protocol, where we'll uh, bundle all their nursing care mm -hmm. and we'll give them a little bolus of something, propofol or midazolam, and right before it mm -hmm. to prevent the... That's really if it's clearly seizure activity, not just mm -hmm. periodic discharges. Cool. Um, and if it's neither of these, then we call it spontaneous. Um, and if you, nobody tested it, just call it unknown. Mm -hmm. uh, sporadic discharges. We did it for some interictal things as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so same thing. If you say someone has occasional spikes, that means they have them somewhere between once a minute and once an hour. And if they're frequent, then they're, they have to be more than once a minute. Mm -hmm. and ab abundant is every page. Okay. okay, and rare is less than one an hour. So if you have a one hour EEG, it's not possible to call something rare. What if there's right? only one? If there's one, it's then it's one an hour. That already makes it to occasional. What if what if only half of it is on the last page? <laughs> <laughs> if it's a one hour and one minute record and there's only one, then maybe it makes it to rare. <laughs> what about continuity? All right, so this um, hasn't hasn't really changed. So uh, continuity is defined by the percent of the record that's of the lower amount. And that's either attenuation or suppression. And the only difference between those is whether they're more or less than just 10 microvolts. Um, mm -hmm. So if you have a totally flat record, that's just called suppression. Um, if, if your suppression or attenuation occupies between 50 and 99% of the record, and that's what's called burst suppression or burst attenuation. So where, where the, did... the, the uh, lower amplitude has to be more than the higher amplitude part. Um, so yeah, so if it's less, if this flat parts are less than 50%, we call it discontinuous. Mm -hmm. And for all of it, you should, you should say about what percent of the record is suppressed or attenuated. That's the most useful of all. Mm -hmm. and I, I think, you know, so we had um, actually uh, Santa Claus on our show last year and he had, uh, he had an electrocerebral silence actually yeah. he had he was uh suppressed almost 100 percent. in his case it wasn't an, an anoxic brain injury it was a pharmacologically induced it turned out and it, it, it i think it eventually reversed and he was able to deliver presents um, so burst suppression is not always bad or good i guess it can be you have to know what the cause is right exactly if it's your anesthesiologist giving you drugs it's it's not a bad thing unnecessarily bad or a neonate yeah yeah all right so that's that's continuity cool.